Nancy investigates a series of mysterious accidents cliché. Why does Nancy have a framed photo of Rose? Nancy has her own designer label, but she still wears mom jeans. Nancy's journal clearly has a keyhole, but it doesn't have a key. Nancy's journal is pretty much useless for solving the mystery. Abby assumes Nancy already knows about the seance without being told. She sounds busy. No, she doesn't. Nancy does everyone else's chores cliche. I noticed Rose didn't put herself on the work schedule. Rose has Nancy fly all the way out to California just so Nancy can do three chores and that's it. Well then, I don't have anything for you to do right now. Rose has a list of chores right in front of her, but she can't think of anything else for Nancy to do. There are a lot of nooks and crannies to explore. Rose mispronounces nook. Rose lectures Nancy for a minute, then says... Enough chit-chat. Like, Nancy was the one who was talking too much. I've seen bobbleheads with less wobbly necks than Rose. The tile puzzle. You'll need to look around for a chisel or paint scraper for the job. I'm not sure where Charlie keeps them. Asking Charlie for help is not an option. The insurance agent signs her name Helen O'Leary HL slash cow. Charlie's shirt. I'm repairing some floorboards, so be careful walking around. Charlie says he's repairing floorboards, but the floor looks perfect everywhere in the house. House has a lot of doors and rooms that we can't enter. The key to the attic is in the cash register in the basement. I don't understand the logic behind that. Charlie's screwdriver is unnecessary because you can use the paint scraper in its place. How do you like working for Abby? She's not bad. Unfortunately, Rose doesn't want to fire him. Charlie's dialogue indicates that he works for Abby, but Abby's dialogue indicates that he works for Rose. Nobody cares that Charlie is secretly living in Rose's basement. Charlie's conveniently absent whenever Nancy enters his basement hideout. Charlie keeps a disc that has the outline for his term paper, but not the term paper itself. All of the old newspapers in the basement are framed and protected, except this one. Nancy is completely in shadow here, despite having two candles in front of her. How did Abby play this tape during the seance? The tape player in her bedroom is clearly too large to fit down here. Abby operates her ghost trick machines at all times, even in the middle of the night when she's asleep. It's not explained how Abby made the wooden phoenix move in the sitting room. Do you know much about the original owner? Almost all the records on these old houses were destroyed. Unfortunately, there are no records on this house before 1906. We have the phone record, which proves Valdez was the house's original owner, but Rose and Lewis both insist we have no idea who the original owner is. There appears to be no use for the chess book, the non-alcoholic drink book, or the mystery book in the attic. Players expected to tell the difference between three similar looking keys. The maze puzzle. Solving the maze puzzle bypasses Lewis's computer security. Why does he even bother protecting his computer with a password when anybody can log into it no problem? Computer interface reused from previous games. You can't use half of the icons on the computer screen. He said he's had trouble with viruses lately. Really? His computer does, like, three things. What is there for the virus to mess up? My name is Lewis Chandler. Which sounds a lot like Chandelier. This animation error. Lewis's letterhead is a top hat, but Lewis himself never wears a top hat at any point in time. What are you using the library for? Research. This library contains many rare books. Hmm. Lewis is up to something. Nancy knows Lewis is here to research the library, yet she thinks it's suspicious that he's reading books there. He's hiding something in his briefcase. Nancy, you were watching him the whole time. You could clearly see it was a book. Aha! Uh -huh. That's it! Lewis acts like this book is way more important than it actually is. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Where did you hear that? I came across it in a book. No doubt the book I have locked in my briefcase. Lewis knows you snooped through his briefcase if you say you heard gumbo foo from a book. Because obviously there's only one book in the whole world which contains that phrase. That's too bad. 
And to think you could have saved the day. And helped out Rose. George thinks doing construction work is a higher priority than finding hidden treasure. Nancy finds hidden treasure cliché. Nancy is mentioned in this newspaper article, which means Lewis is keeping tabs on her. The game glosses over this fact. Nancy, I'm ashamed of you. Everyone in this house expects some degree of privacy. Except Abby, who is spying on everyone with secret cameras. Is there a reason Abby hasn't told Rose the truth about the hauntings? As the co-owner who doesn't want this place to get shut down, it'd be in her best interest to confess. Players expected to know who Emily Foxworth is, even though she hasn't been mentioned before and will never be mentioned again. You're not in San Francisco, are you, my dear? Actually, I am. Nancy emphasizes the wrong word in this sentence. Hannah Gruen will pretty much disappear from the video game series after this. Apparently, living with Nancy Drew doesn't make you an important person in her life. The K in knickknacks is capitalized. Then the capitalization disappears. The comma after hello magically appears. The comma in the last sentence disappears and reappears. There shouldn't be a comma after named. Doesn't is misspelled. Senor is misspelled. You know what? Forget the grammar issues. Let's just say the subtitles need proofreading and move on. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Pox phobiscum. Abby tries to show off in Latin and fails because vobis is second person plural. She meant to say pox tecum. Dangerous chandelier rope is not kept out of the reach of children. Just don't vandalize the next house you stay in, okay? Especially if it's ours. Bess and George live in the same house now, apparently. Nancy finds a hidden attic and no one cares. The only way out breaks at the worst possible time, cliche. I can't read this. Seances were very popular during the Victorian era, and I plan to entertain our guests with them. Maybe you could entertain them with a spa treatment. I call it massage in a haunted mansion. That you'll be alone in the house for a while. Everyone is going to the Winter Festival. All the characters make plans to go to the Winter Festival, and they don't invite Nancy. Ungrateful jerks. If Nancy looks at the fire, you get an automatic game over. The correct solution is to get a fire extinguisher before acknowledging that the fire exists. Talk about doing things backwards. The fire is a game over sequence, yet it barely burns anything. Nancy could have easily opened the door here and learned who the culprit is. Why did the culprit wait until Nancy was at the door? It would have been a lot safer to put the note in the room while she was sleeping. Nancy is so unfazed by this threat, she doesn't even comment on it or talk to the characters about it. The only reason Nancy finds the safe is because Rose had the tapestry cleaned. She solves the mystery through a lucky coincidence, not because she's a good detective. This puzzle! You're forced to remember all the symbols which were scattered throughout the game. Puzzle does not save your progress when you back away. I can't be the only person who went back to the library to see what the Phoenix picture looks like, only to learn I had to resolve the symbols puzzle. Light doesn't work like that. Lewis knocks Nancy out and says, Too bad no one will ever find out about it. Like Nancy will magically forget everything when she comes to. When Lewis knocks Nancy out, her inventory disappears. Close up on Lewis's unmoving butt. If you pause here, you'll notice that Lewis isn't actually holding any coins, he's just pretending to move them into his bag. Where did Lewis's bag come from? Doesn't he have a suitcase? It'd be a lot easier if he scooped up coins with his bag instead of moving them one by one. The only way the staircase challenge works is if Lewis has the worst peripheral vision ever. Nancy stands around and does nothing while Lewis runs away. Lewis hears when Nancy goes up the squeaky staircase, but he doesn't hear the squeaks coming from the chandelier. Lewis survives this without any injuries. Lewis is firmly sitting on his legs, which are together. Now his legs are splayed. Lewis's bag disappears when the chandelier falls. You can see some gold coins in Lewis's bag here, but you'll notice none of the coins have been moved from their original position. Manually dialing 10-digit phone numbers. Sorry, I meant to say that one earlier, but I forgot. Lewis wanted to buy the house so he could look for the treasure. 
He knows he could have looked for the treasure without buying the house first, right? Game's ending forgets to resolve the subplot about Charlie living in the basement. For all we know, he's still living there.